On this episode of OBD for Everyone, we're going to be using these inexpensive Wi-Fi scanners, an app called Turk Pro, to connect, add some gauges, and make it talk faster. The first step is to plug in our Wi-Fi OBD2 scanner into the car's diagnostic port. Now these ports are typically located on the driver's side, kind of at the bottom of the dash. I've got my Elm 327 plugged in, and the first thing we're going to do is start the car. This will ensure everything is powered up and it will give us live data that we can view. Because this is Wi-Fi, we need to connect to it. To do that, we go to Settings, and under Wi-Fi, we can see we've got a Wi-Fi hotspot called Wi-Fi OBD2. We will touch that and connect and we are now connected. We'll hit the home button, let's now start torque. In the top left hand corner, we have four icons which indicate to us status of different things. The first icon is GPS lock, so when it's not flashing, it's telling us it knows where we are, which is good. The next icon looks a bit like a tablet, and that's telling us that the torque app has the resources that it requires. The next icon looks like a OBD scanner, and it's flashing. And that's telling us it's not able to connect to our OBD scanner. And that's because Torque, by default, looks for a Bluetooth connection. This is Wi-Fi, so we need to change that. To do that, we simply touch on the gear, go to Settings, and under OBD2 Adapter Settings, at the very top, we have Connection Type. We will change that to Wi-Fi and we'll touch back and back again. As we can see now, the OBD scanner is no longer flashing, meaning the app was able to connect to our Wi-Fi scanner. And the icon next to that looks like a car. That tells us our app is now connected to the engine's ECU through our Wi-Fi OBD scanner. And we've got live data. And we know that because if I accelerate a little bit, we can see the engine RPM go up. Now here you may see it says profile not set up. We need to create a vehicle profile. So to do that, we will touch our gear, say vehicle profile, and we're gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call this G37, engine displacement is 3.7. Our total vehicle weight with me in it is about 1,780. And the only other thing I'm gonna specify right now is the max dial RPM. Torque needs to know what's the red line of our engine, so on any tack display, it can properly display maximum engine speed. And I'm gonna to touch save. So now that's done, and here we can see we have a profile of G37. Let's go to real-time information here, and this is one of the standard dashboards that Torque provides. We have our engine RPM, vehicle speed, coolant temperature, acceleration, throttle position, and engine vacuum. If I accelerate a bit, we can see things change. Let's say we want to delete a gauge. We don't want acceleration. This acceleration gauge, actually it's coming from our Android tablet. Let's delete it. I'm gonna to touch and hold, and then say delete. I'm gonna to touch and hold, and say add display. And here I'm gonna make it a dial meter, and what I wanna add is one of these items. Now, you may notice some items are a bright green, some are a dark green, and some are black. The items that are black are not supported by your specific vehicle. The items that are a bright green, it's live data. And if you look at the blue text, you can see the live data. Now, most of the time, the live data is coming from the ECU. However, in the example of acceleration, whether for total x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis, that's actually coming from the tablet. So it's not coming from the ECU. Anyways, I want to actually look at air-fuel ratio measured, and I want that large. When you add a display or a gauge, it gets added to the middle. Simply put your finger on it and drag it to where you want. So I'm going to drop this off right here. So right now we know the air to fuel ratio with a vehicle idling is about 14.6. Let's add another gauge of a different type. We'll touch and hold on speed and say delete. 
and touch and hold say add display and we're going to make this a graph now this graph here i'm going to make accelerator pedal position right there and we'll do large touch and hold and drag it up and we're good now if i give it a little bit of gas we can see all the live data we can see our engine rpm pedal position coolant temperature airflow ratio, throttle position, as well as our intake manifold vacuum. We're gonna to touch back. Let's have a look at how fast this Wi-Fi scanner is working for us. To do that, we simply go to adapter status, and we scroll down here to where it says adapter PID read speed. So right now we're getting an average of about 20. In one second, we are able to read 20 different items from the ECU. However, I think we can make it faster. If you notice, directly above that, it says faster communication is currently set to no. Now that we know everything is working, let's try faster communication and see what happens. To do that, we have to touch back. We'll go to the gear, we'll go to settings, and under OBD2 adapter settings, we will then say faster communication, turn it on. Now we need to quit and restart. So we will hit back, back, and back and okay let's restart torque so let's now go to adapter status scroll down here we can see it says faster communication yes and now look at this our adapter PID read speed is now an average of 51 53 we're currently at a maximum of 76 this is fantastic and, and the reason why it's good when this is fast it allows you to read the data quicker and it allows you to read more sensors. And this can be very useful. As we can see here, this has really, really sped up our ability to read data from the ECU. Let's go back here, and we'll go back to real-time information. And if we rev the engine a bit, there we are. We can see all what's going on there. If for any reason you wanna reset this back to how it was, we can simply touch the gear, and say layout settings and touch reset dials to default layout say yes and now we are back at the very beginning